SimWorld presents Around the Table with E and the Fat Man. What's up, everybody? It's me, it's me, it's the B.O.B., and I'm here with another solo edition of Around the Table with E and the Fat Man. Around the Table is the podcast where me and E talk about whatever we want. Today, I want to look into the SimWorld prep future, season three, end of the year, a little bit. Uh, I want to make my predictions now on who I think is going to be the final top 10 players of SimWorld Prep Season 3. Uh, there, I'm sure there are going to be some names on here that people are going to shrug off a little bit. There's going to be some really tough decisions that I have to make. Um, I Specifically, I think the the top three is extremely interchangeable. Um, but at the end of the day... I have to go with my gut on this one. Uh, For me, coming in at number 10, uh, I think it's going to be Carson Cutbirth. Uh, Elite facilitator. I think he has great, great vision. Uh, I I expect him. So let me me rewind a little bit. I'm going to contradict myself a little bit here. I think he will look like a top 10 player on the court, but we know a lot of people look at stats, and I don't think he – is going to potentially have the offensive stats, specifically points, that people are going to want to see from a top 10 player. But I don't care. I think he is that good of a facilitator that he's going to make his teammates better, that I think he is going to be a top 10 player at the end of the year. My top 10 player. Coming in at number nine, I got to go with Dink Pate. Uh, What he showed us up until... Coach Robinson started taking his minutes away at the end of the year. Dink Pate was an elite, one of the one of the top scorers in all Sim World Prep. Uh, I really think that Dink Pate has what it takes to lead Rocky Mountain uh, if Coach Robinson just gives him the keys and lets him go. Uh, he had a lot of talent on the floor with him. Uh, they're all all gone. I mean, Bell's gone. He, he's not going to have to worry about him. Uh, again, there's a ton, a ton of talent on that Rocky Mountain team. I think Dink Pete's going to make his way into the top 10, so I'll, I'll throw him in at nine. Uh, next guy, number eight, I think people are probably going to think I might have him a little bit lower because they think he's good offensively and as a facilitator as well. Uh, but I think number eight is going to come down to Marco Jacobs, Queen City Kings. Um, he He is a very, very talented player. Uh, but I think while right now he finished, I think, a little bit higher than a few of the names that I'm going to mention in the final Sim, Sim World Prep Season 2 uh, rankings, I think he's going to he's gonna come down a little bit uh, as some of these other guys get a bigger role on their teams. Um, so coming in at number seven, a guy who had a ton of highlights this season, and I think Coach Brad Lee uh, would be smart to unleash him this season is Dexter Jackson of Southeast Select. Uh, and he's extremely athletic, can get to the rim, can punish the rim, can punish anybody that's standing in front of him uh, when he's trying to get to the rim. Um, I think that he, at the end of the season, is going to be number seven on Sim World Prep Top 10. Um, coming in at number six, um, I'm going to have to go with Narnie Johnson, uh, similar to Atlantis. Uh, he was a guy who he, he really, really exploded when nobody was really thinking about him. And the fact that he was on an Atlantis team that really overperformed, um, his name got out there probably better than a lot of the intercontinental region teams did, because let's be honest, I mean, they weren't that in overall the intercontinental region, they weren't that great. Our international teams have not fared very well in sim world prep uh, from the ground zero season until now. Uh, the teams that we thought would be elite, the sim world Europe's because of how much talent Europeans produce uh, in the SWBA or in professional basketball, whether it's overseas or the SWBA, uh, we expected a lot from Sim World Europe and they just, they never really produce. And unfortunately that stigma has stuck around with all the international teams since then. Uh, but I think Johnson is, I think he's going to just barely miss out on that top five. Uh, 
My number five, I think, is, again, another... I think it's a guy that can probably lead SimWorld Prep in scoring. Uh, and he is a guy that is currently not on a team, and that's Azunda Mazaka. Um, he had a rocky start to his SimWorld Prep career with Philadelphia. Uh, him and Coach Drees, obviously, they didn't mesh very well. And sometimes that's okay. He got a second... Uh, a second chance at life with the North. And he, I think he proved there that he could be uh, that elite scorer. But again, it was another team that did have uh, some talent. Like you had a rod. Um, if uh, speaking of the North, if Enzo stays there, I think he's going to develop into a, uh, into an elite facilitator. Um, but yeah, I just, I mean, back to Mazaka, I think if he gets on, uh, the right team, I think that he could, again, potentially lead some world prep season three in scoring by the end of the year. Um, coming in at number four, this is, uh, this is where it gets real tough, uh, but I'm going to have to go with Houston's, uh, or sorry, H-Town's Almighty Soul. Uh, great, great player all around. Um, he really, really showed out for a, an H-Town team that didn't necessarily live up to I think what a lot of people were expecting uh, and nobody was really expecting him to be the leader of that team. Uh, but he was, and he really showed that he has, uh, has all the tools to be the leader of a team like that. I mean, we're talking about a guy who finished on the all world B team for SimWorld world prep. Um, I just, he, he really showed a ton of talent last season, again, for an each town team that I think really, really underperformed. Um, so yeah, that's for me number four. <sighs> now we're now where we start to upset some people. Uh, number three, I have to go with our. He was on the Sim World A team, uh, and there's gonna be two players who place above him for me, uh, and what my projection is gonna be for the final Sim World uh, Sim World's sim world prep season three uh top 10 and uh, i'm gonna have to go with kai killens uh, what he did uh, in his first season was pretty outstanding um believe that he got robbed of the newcomer of the year uh, which almighty soul won um i i really believe that kai killens should have won that newcomer of the year um but again he was one of those guys who he was really he was key for that Gulf Coast team. Uh, he did everything, everything right for them. Um, I don't think there, there's really not a ton of holes in his particular game. Um, but for me, uh, I, I do think that he's going to take just a little bit of a drop for that team just because I think he has such high expectations that I think he, people are going to be disappointed if he isn't twice as good, which is unrealistic. Um, so again, I do, I think Kai Kellens is going to round out there at number three, um, for next year's final rankings. Number two, these, this one was even harder and I, my big man bias, everybody knows I have a big man bias. My last two are big men. Um, I really think that now I have to decide if I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm not going to, um, I'm just going to stick with it. Number two, I'm going with Monty Parsons for Philadelphia Elite. Um, I think that he has all the tools, except the outside game, which you know everybody, if you're a big now and you're not shooting threes, they think something's wrong with you. Neither of my my number two or my number one, they're not shooting threes that much. I don't feel like that's necessary in the game. I think I'm going to jump to my favorite team, SWBA's uh, 76ers. I wish Embiid would just stop. Go play an uh, old school big man. I think he can do it. I think he could. He would dominate, but he wants to show off them shooting skills. You don't need it. You don't need it to be a great big. Um, I wish these kids would understand that. And I think Monty Parsons understands that because he doesn't force up shots. I think he might have taken one three all year, if I can remember off the top of my head, potentially against the originators. For some reason, that's sticking out. Um, but I just think with the system that he's in, the defense that he can bring, it's really up to him um, if he's going to be number two or number one. Kind of. I do think Jay Mills, again, I think people are going to look at the offensive number. They always do the points more than anything else. And I think Jay Mills is really going to step up this season. 
So I think he's probably going to take a little bit from Monty Parsons um, with uh, with that regard. So I think maybe he's not going to score as many points as some people are going to like to see. Uh, but again, I think he's again, this was extremely hard, but I think that he will finish at number two next season. And my number one, again, you're going to my my big man bias seven foot two andre ivanov some world europe uh yeah. i think the guy has all of the tools to be the next great big in sim world u and swba and he's just by his time now in sim world prep um at seven foot two there's not a whole lot that he can't do under that rim um uh, he's gonna score for you he's gonna rebound for you he's gonna block for you. he's just all around he's a menace um, I'd really hope I, I'd really like to see him and Cooper flag sharing that court at Duke. Um, I know that's not going to happen though. Uh, just cause we know Cooper flag is going to be leaving and, um, leaving after one year, we just would assume, um, cause I, I think his family might pull some strings to get around that sim world. You two year requirement, um, that we have in there. I just money talks and I know you get, give me a couple dollars and I will, make sure to get Cooper Fike scooting around that, that two year requirement. But if not, I, if they force him to do it, I'm just, I think Ivanov and Cooper, Cooper Fly could bring a potentially bring a championship for Duke. Uh, but no, this is not about flag Turn it into flag. It's not about flag. Um, so Ivanov, I just, I think that he is going to be, I think he's going to be significantly better. And I think he's going to grow, which is going to be even scarier. I wouldn't be surprised if he hit the hit the floor at seven three seven four two fifty, um, and that is not not somebody that you want to come across because he's athletic too. Um, but yeah, so that for me, that's my projections for the end of the season threes. Uh, Sim World Prep top ten. I keep calling it top ten. It's top one hundred. But the, what I think the top ten is going to look like: Carson Cutbirth at ten, Pate Dink Pate at number nine, Marco Jacobs at eight, Dexter Jackson seven. Bernani Johnson, uh, six. Ozunda Mazaka at five. Almighty Soul at four. Kai Killens at three. Monty Parsons at two. And Andre Ivanov at number one. Let me know what you guys think. I know, again, there's some people that could rotate here at the bottom. Um, I know that the order, it was extremely tough at the top there. Uh, but it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any, if you have anybody that you think that, that I might have missed, might have snubbed out. Let us know down below in the comments and everything. But I appreciate you guys listening as always, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week.